Hi, and welcome to uh, this Excel tutorial on how to uh, use the power of Excel to calculate your data from the demonstrating osmosis in Carrot Cells Lab, and also to be able to graph that data using the power of Microsoft Excel. So as I explained in class, you can use formulas in Microsoft Excel to make calculations. Um, here in this uh, spreadsheet, you'll see that in the cells I've included the solution strength, the mass of carrots at the start, the mass of carrots at the end, their change in mass, and the percent weight change columns. The last two columns haven't been calculated, and as we did in class, I can show you how to insert the formulas to make those columns use the data from the previous columns to calculate. So if I want to know the change in mass of my carrots from start to finish of my laboratory, I select the cell that I want. In this case, I'm selecting cell D4, because that's where I want to put a formula. To put a formula, I start with an equal sign. After the equal sign, I can select cells that I want to use in my calculation. The change in mass is basically is the chain is what the carrots weight at the end minus what the carrots weight at the beginning. So to do that, I select the cell from the carrots mass at the end, which is cell C4. Minus, I put that in with my keyboard, and then select the cell like, uh, of the mass of the carrots at the start. And that gives me a formula which is equals C4 minus B4, and hit enter. And you can see that it calculates that value for me. I want that calculation to extend down to all of the cells in that column. I simply grab a hold of the little handle at the bottom right of that box, and I drag it down to all the other boxes that I want. And that means that, th that those boxes will use the same data that's to the left of them to make the calculation in that cell. And so you can see that I've calculated the change in mass for all of the different solution strengths carrot sets. To calculate the percent weight change, I use the formula that's at the bottom. Notice that I've already calculated the mass at the end minus the mass at the start. And so all that I need to do is take that value from this column and subtract the mass at the start, or divide, sorry, the mass of the carrots at the start from this column. So in this cell, I'm going to do another calculation, put in the word equal sign, and this time I want to equal column D4 divided by, which is a slash, the mass at the start, and hit enter. And that gives me the value. If your value doesn't come up as a percentage, you can go to the top menu where it says number, you can see my cursor's there now, and click the percentage button, and that will make that value from a decimal into a percentage. Like guys, as before, I can grab the handle on the bottom right and drag it down to the other four rows, and it will calculate those values as well, using the correct value. If I want to check, I can always click on a particular cell. And you can see here that this cell is actually D5, and it's subtracting B5. All right, so now we've made our calculations of change in mass and percent weight change. And we want to graph the comparison of the percent weight change with solution strength. So, to do that, I select those two columns. I select them by dragging my mouse or down over one column and selecting all of those items. And if I want to select a column that's not attached, I hold down the control button and go over to the percent weight change column and highlight all of those. Then, I go to the insert menu at the top of Excel, right next to the home. And there you can see that about halfway across under the charts menu, there's a menu for scatter. Click on scatter, and I like to select the one that, that plots the, the points for me, but also connects them with a smooth line. Click on that, and it will automatically take your data and plot it in Excel. This graph is not finished, as you know, because there are, the axes are not labeled and the title is not accurate. So to change the title, we can click on the one that's there, highlight it, and change it to a title that describes what we can learn by looking at the graph. In this case, you could learn uh, how the mass of a carrot changes depending upon the solution strength that it, that, that it is in. So I'm going to uh, m change my title to reflect that. So I'm going to write the change in mass of carrot cells soaked in various solutions. And that can be my title. I also want to add titles for my axes because I don't uh, uh, have them labeled now. 
To do that, you'll see the Chart Tools is highlighted at the top uh, of my menu bar. I'm going to click on the Layout tab under Chart Tools, and there I have a tab for Axis Titles, somewhat on the left side. Click on that, and it'll ask me, do you want to use the horizontal or the vertical axis? I'm going to choose horizontal, and I want that to be the below the axis. So I click on that, it'll put one there. And while it's highlighted, I can just begin typing. And of course, this is solution strength. And you can str see up here in the, um, the, in the argument bar here that it's typed that in. And when I hit enter, it'll place it down here um, underneath the x axis of the graph. For my vertical axis, the y axis, I click here and hit vertical axis title. I have some more options here, depending on which way I want it to be displayed. I want it to be a vertical title, like that, or I can put it in as a rotated title, like that, or I can keep it horizontal, like that. We'll leave it at this, and I'm going to call this percent weight change, and my title, my title gets put in there. I said in class that you're, because the y-axis is already labeled percent weight change, we don't necessarily need to uh, include that in my legend. So if you wanted to, you could click on the legend, right-click on it, and hit delete. And that'll make it go away. And notice when you do that, um, you get double versions of each percentage. And what is happening here is that it's actually rounding the half percent markers on your graph uh, to a single digit. To get rid of that, you can right click on the graph itself, on the, right on the x axis, and at the bottom where it says format axis, you can select that, and a menu like this will come up. And what's happening here is that um, your major unit on your axis is actually half a percent. We want to change it to be a whole percent. So click on fixed and change that to be not 0 .005, but 0 .01. You also want your maximum value to be probably 3%, because that is the, uh, um, the value that, uh, that you actually stop with. So you can click on maximum and change that to 0 .03, then that will uh, make your graph a little bit neater. When you hit close, you'll see some changes happen to the graph. First, those double ones, twos, and threes will go away. At the same time, your graph will be stretched all the way from the y-axis to the very end. The last thing you might want to insert here is a trend line. Uh, this is particularly useful if, you're, if your data are not a nice trend like mine, but it might be all over the place. To do that, go up to the top right of the menu bar, and you're looking at trend line. So you can see it's highlighted here. Click on that, and we want a linear trend line. You can see that's the second option. It adds or sets a linear trend line for the selected chart series. So we click on that, and you can see that trend line is plotted right on top of your data. And you can leave it just like that. This graph is now ready to print or to turn in. And you have a couple options how to do that. The first thing you do is you can select the graph and then go up to the, the, the uh, Windows button and click Print. When you click on the Print key, it's going to ask you what you want to print. And you can see here where it says print what, that selected chart is now uh, selected. And that's because you highlighted the chart before you selected the print menu. And that will print that. That's one option. The second option is for you to right click on the graph and hit um, select the copy function. You then can open up a new Word document. Open up Microsoft Word here. And by uh, going up to the insert menu, you could uh, actually the easiest thing would be to right click and hit paste because you've already copied it to your clipboard. And you can see it's going to put your graph right in there in a Word document. And then you could print the Word document just like you wanted to. You also could go on and type. So when it comes to including your post lab analysis questions with your graph, you could do them all in the same document just by typing along with it. I hope this was helpful to you uh, in learning how to use Excel to analyze uh, data that we collect in uh, the science classroom. 
If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, um, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them as you work on this assignment tonight. Thank you very much.